Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 15. My wow. name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. Wow, 15. I know. And we're joined today with Molly, who's going to uh, um, collaborate with us on this introduction of this awesome new project pack. Hey, everyone. As you all know, we are on number 15 for our project packs. And every time we start thinking about what our next project pack is, we kind of dig deep into our roots and sort of trends and think about fun ways um, to explore tangling, really. And this next one has been sort of an obvious uh, thing that has been a theme throughout Zentangle since even before I think Zentangle knew it was was here. And the art of lettering has for sure been a huge part of my life, um, but it has also been a, a big part of the Zentangle life. And we've always kind of had this sort of looming idea that at some point we would play with letters. And I think it was in a, um, a Zentangle event we had a couple years ago, we did a little exploration with creating borders with letters and it was a, a little seed we planted yeah. and we played around with a little bit and so it had been sitting there on the pro list of project pack ideas for a long time and finally we decided that um, this would be a good time to to dig into how letter forms um, could inspire tangles, how language can inspire tangles, how um, our past of all these different um, things and how Zentangle came about um, could inspire some really cool projects. So we decided to dig into it. This August we are exploring project pack number 15 um, using letters, letter forms, all kinds of different um, ways to let one little cool thing inspire us for our tangling projects. So I asked Maria to grab some of her uh, lettering examples and so you can see some of the early Zentangle DNA. Right? I know. This, these are uh, I, some of the things that were in my portfolios which are very uh, old and, and kind of dear to my heart. Uh, this one here I did on an airplane on the way back from a trip to Venice, 1998. No turbulence that day, huh? Right. Uh, well, once you're up there <laughs> and, and you're used to it, maybe the turbulence kind of added to it. But I know I did the whole thing, and I designed this piece as a Christmas card. And I, had, uh, I was trying out this new book I had bought while I was in Venice and the paper and to, to see how the paper was going to be for drawing and, and everything else. And, and I really loved it. So I, I pretty much couldn't stop. <laughs> and so you could tell that uh, as time went on, um, I didn't lose my enthusiasm for this book. So <laughs> you can see on the next page, I, I might have gotten a little bit more uh, exuberant well, even. I, I want to just uh, point out and in the comments on the video below, uh, this is a Christmas card. Right. And if anybody can figure out why it's a Christmas card, please leave it in the comments below. <laughs> okay. Okay. And this will be uh, fun. Yeah. that'll be fun. And you can see the. I think this was in 1996. You can you can really 98. notice 98. Yeah. You can notice the uh, the beginnings of crescent moon and the concept of aura ing in letters. So. This one. Oh, that's fun. Right? Look at all this. So great. So many of you um, ask me when I, well, have asked me, oh, it must have been so fun to grow up with Zentangle. Um, but I actually didn't grow up with Zentangle. Zentangle came about when I was um, about 23 or 24. Yep. So I, I didn't grow up with Zentangle. But I did grow up with lots of letters and art. <laughs> and uh, my mom's... Uh, passion for lettering was um, and art really has always been there so uh, me and my siblings grew up in this fantastical world of of beautiful alphabets and um, illuminated fairy tale like things just covering the walls uh, it was quite magical and really special and so I feel like they were the seeds of Zentangle to come these flourishes and decorative um, patterns covering all different scripts and and quotes and things that just covered the walls. So this just reminds me of so much of what my childhood was about, <laughs> just looking back at so, this. But you can see flux in there. And, yeah. And, and if you 
see that that's all I used on the whole alphabet. This was a, a project I did for a box company, those decorative boxes mm -hmm. that you find in department stores and stuff. And uh, I had a great time. I loved the letters and and like I said, the exuberance of the of the letters. They look like they're going to walk away and have a party. Uh, this it was so much fun. Um, and unlike my, I'm, I'm usually pretty traditional and, and not so uh, colorful in my work, but this one was just fun, right? I've never thought of you as traditional, but... No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> and you can see in the, the flux, and one of the things that, that this uh, is a good reminder of is that Zentangle isn't about the, the inventing of patterns. It's about the deconstructing of patterns so that anyone can reconstitute it and create it really easily and interpret it as they would want to interpret it. So that's the es essence of a step out. That's the whole idea of Zentangle and being aware and appreciating the patterns throughout the world. Uh, and those, those were really uh, ancient patterns for lettering. So in this, uh, this display. This was a series that I did for a uh, stationary company. And uh, they used them for quite a while. And uh, I just thought the combination of a strict Roman alphabet uh, with all these flourishing and, and uh, excited uh, little lacy feelings was, was such a, uh, Contrast, right? And uh, I, I loved this design. I liked working on this project. Really, just using the letter as a string in this case, right? right. Yeah. So the letter itself becomes the form of of what you are uh, tangling. And I think this was after Zentangle had uh, right had had taken root, so to speak. So many awesome things. This is just so cool to see how. And we talk about you know, Ixo being sort of the, the roots of all the strokes you need to know. And if you look at all of these things that are in front of us, they really do are made up of either a line, a dot, um, a curve, an S curve, an orb. So it really does have that same feel. And one of the things that this, uh, this project pack is, is reinforces is, well, first of all, we're, this is the language that we use. These are the letter forms that we use. And you also use maybe th these letter forms or maybe a whole other series of letter forms. But what's important here is to look at the letter forms with fresh eyes and seeing them as elements that could be put into patterns. And, you know, sometimes things that are so familiar to us we stop seeing them, they become almost invisible. But in this case, we're looking at, well, how could we take letters and make them elements of patterns, just like Molly said, we use the dot, line, curve, mm -hmm. those forms of Ixo. And this is one of my favorite logos that I ever designed. And the, the, uh, the customer is Paces Papers in Atlanta, this beautiful stationery store where I did lots of work for. And they wanted something new and fresh. And I came up with the idea of the plume because to me that signifies writing. And, um, and then as I started to make different uh, variations of the feather, I came up with the idea of using P for Paces Papers, P and P, um, as the what is it, tines of the, uh, uh, the, the, the things right, on right. a feather, you know, the, the part that comes out. And once I started going in that direction, it was just, it, it made so much sense. And you don't even see it at first because you see the feather. Uh, but there, there it was. And uh, they used that. They engraved these in gold. And it, it, it was just so beautiful. That's they really made pretty. their bags and, their, and everything. It was one of my favorite projects. So this is the idea that inspired this, is to <coughs> look at these familiar forms of letters and characters, what I've, whatever they are in your language, and then sort of translate that into the language of Zentangle, that pattern language that, that we've all come to discover and, and speak in and, and share in. And, uh, 
we really want to make sure that even though we've showed you all this very um, elegant calligraphic work, um, we're going to say right now that we're letting go of that right. because this really isn't about calligraphy. It's not about um, having any particular experience with um, penmanship or anything like that. It, we really want you to use however you draw a letter and use that as part of the sort of inspiration behind creating a form or creating a pattern. Uh, and we're going to be taking all sorts of approaches in the next couple of days or I guess um, videos that we're going to be sharing with you all and they all kind of come at it at a different angle and that's what's exciting about project packs is we sort of give ourselves these elegance of limits and then we create some really fun videos around it and it's Zentangle there's no mistakes yes. we're gonna have fun with this and I, I think you're gonna enjoy it so don't think you need to have any calligraphic experience we are saying that right now let go of any um anxiety you might have around that because this is really going to take it in a different direction so speaking of project pack let's uh let's open this and uh molly you can describe what yes. we're going to find in so here. um we always say if you don't have these materials go out and find ones like them if you can um, but inside our project pack number 15 envelopes we have some really fun stuff this is our tile envelope so um, as we said earlier we explored um, the roots of this with a project um, at a event with some CZTs years ago and we used this alpha borders um, alpha borders <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a really cool kind of template for us to play with some really, really neat uh, bordering. And when you put it all together, you have it all on this um, really beautiful Antiepolo piece of paper. So this is going to get filled by the end of these videos, which is really exciting. Um, so this one's blank, not as exciting, but in a, in a few, at about a week, you'll have that all filled up, which is really fun. Um, we have a couple of five tiles. We have a couple square tiles in there. We're going to be working on all um, white tiles for this project pack. And uh, I just want to say, just in case, that we're also going to be working on the backside of the alpha borders oh, good point, Mom. piece, not to uh, draw on there before we have a chance to tell you what we're going to do on there. No surface is sacred here. No yeah. surface is <laughs> Or safe. actually, every, yeah. sa every, every, every surface, surface is sacred safe. and no not safe. safe. Right, exactly. And then we have these two um, kind of bonus items in here. Uh, we are uh, giving you these little glassine envelopes. Um, this was sort of inspired by the fact that it's nice to keep your tiles in a really special case, but also um, working with the idea of letters, which inspired us to sort of think about that word um, in another way of sending a letter. And we thought maybe we, this would inspire you to make something special for somebody and want to send it to them or keep it. Right. But uh, these are new little envelopes. Um, the uh, three and a half inch square ones are branded. And, Glassine. And very special. It makes, yes. it makes the artwork feel like really cool. So I'm super psyched about these new envelopes, which is really fun. Well, what I like about these envelopes is that they're that they, you can see through them enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're not plastic and so they right. it takes away that uh, artificial feeling that you want you want something so precious on your artwork yeah. I don't want anything to distract from that and it feels like I don't know like museum quality yeah, or something, yeah. right like you're like it makes I don't it feel know. special it's very special I've, I'm, I'm a sucker for the glassine yeah. envelopes I gotta admit well it also keeps the graphite from abrading off onto something yeah. else and yeah yeah I hope one of you is maybe the lucky one that receives one of these in the mail so uh, and then inside our tool envelope um, whenever we're choosing tools we kind of try to shake it up a little bit and offer you something different and this one we tried to choose a palette and uh, it's fun to have a palette to work from. So this is to me a very late summer palette and uh, <laughs> and I think that once I got going with it I realized all the colors go so well together and what we have here is we have um, a, a brown micron. This is a 01 so this is kind of a warm brown color more of a light brown color. Then we have um, an orange micron. This is also an 01. This is a very um, light color. Oh, sorry, 05. 05. 05. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, and there actually might be some 01s and some 05s out there, to, to be honest with you. So I'm not sure. I think some project packs have different 
sizes. Um, it's an orange micron. We also have a pink micron in there. And we have, um, last but not least, um, this chocolatey brown color. Um, it's called sepia. Um, sometimes we encourage people to mark these with a little piece of tape or something because um, the pen cap does look close to a black, and you don't want to confuse them when you have all your pens together. So when I'm working on a project pack, I usually keep them separate so there is no black in this set so you wouldn't confuse it. But just to let you know, those colors look similar. Um, but the brown is really rich and it has this very beautiful color. So when I, you put it with there, it's... I just want to uh, reiterate uh, what Molly said, but right away, if you take, like Rick's going to take some um, masking tape and just mark it and leave that tape on there forever so that when you grab it, don't mark the cap, mark the uh, pen um, because it... It's different enough so that if you started a project with a black pen, which I did, and and end up using the brown one, it it won't. I mean, they don't. They look different. Yeah, they look different. And, th and that's why it's a, it is a really cool color because it just um, swallows and uh, not swallows, but sort of really kind of complements these other the browns mm. and the orange and the pink together and then we have this lovely a gold jelly roll just for some accent work so it, it's a fun palette of colors and once you get these borders going and we work on some tiles you're going to see all this really just an explosion and it's fun together I it's love a it. great i yeah. love the, i love the palette you chose Molly. yeah and then we have um graphite pencil and a tortillon um we, we left the white charcoal out this time just to keep it a little more simple working with the sort of earth tones and stuff so it's going to be a fun project Project pack. We're super excited. And you can feel free to use any other tools. You're not limited to use right. this. So whatever else you may have, uh, feel free. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's important to note, too, that we're going to be working with um, a Roman alphabet because that's what we know here. Um, but we encourage you all, like as we go through this process, to incorporate in the letters of your culture and your language. Um, and it's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be a good time. And so. we really look forward to seeing everything that you do, and we hope that you uh, post it on the app and uh, share it with everybody. So let's get started. Yay. Yay. See yeah. you soon. Bye. <laughs>